Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Steel Heights Baptist Church Worship Online. I trust that you had a wonderful time worshiping God over Christmas, and as you continue to um, work through the holiday season and enjoy the holiday season, I'm so thankful that you are here to worship online with us, and we believe that God will do great things in our midst as we gather in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, to prepare our hearts for worship, I want to extend to you a call, a call from Psalm 13, verses 5 and 6. Psalm 13, 5 and 6. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Let's pray together. God, thank you that you have been good to us, Lord. You are good and your love endures forever. And so, Lord, once again, as we come to a new year, we trust you, God. We trust you that your goodness and your faithfulness will continue to guide us and be with us, Lord, into this new year. And as we worship you, Lord, we pray that uh, you would encourage our hearts and we ask for your blessing on this entire service. In Jesus' name, amen. The first Noel The angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no
Oh, Lord, uh, this morning, as we continue to celebrate the birth of your son, I want to thank you for all the blessings that you've poured up onto our lives and, uh, and for the blessing that his life uh, bestowed upon us, for the freedom from sin, from death, and life with joy uh, that we can find um, through service, through giving, and the choice to love you, God to love each other, and to love our neighbors. Lord, we praise you for the year that was. And because through its challenge, you've taught us things, patience, kindness, selflessness, and the strength to act together for a greater cause. Lord, we ask for your mercies upon those in our church and our community that have been uh, impacted by the pandemic, uh, whether in health uh, or the loss of a loved one um, in their employment or financial security, through weariness, fatigue, or mental health. Lord, we ask that you would lead them to a place of trust and reliance upon you. And that you'd raise up people around them uh, to support them, guide them, care for them. And we ask, Lord, that if we are those people, that you would point out whom we are to serve. And we would hear your call and respond to support others like God. And for the year that lies before us, we ask uh, that you would teach us unity. Uh, we ask for constructive discourse and for peace, for joy. We pray for our civic, our provincial, and our federal leaders we ask that you would bless them and their families as they continue the difficult task of leading us into another year. We ask that we'd give them strength and wisdom as we press forward. Lord, above all, uh, we ask and we acknowledge your lordship over our lives. We ask that your Holy Spirit would come and fill this place, fill our homes, that we would seek after you we would seek for the quiet times of rest and rejuvenation in your word and in prayer. God, we love you. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. You know, there's a lot of similarities between making a great cup of coffee and doing church life. Like there's, uh, well, <laughs> uh, when, uh, details. <laughs> there's a lot of details when you're making a cup of coffee and here are some details that you should be aware of. Hopefully by now you've heard about the potential merger between Steel Heights and Fresh Mana Fellowship. Pastor Darren mentioned this in his last update and included in that email was a document that outlined some of the reasons and considerations for this potential merger. There will be a Zoom Q&A meeting on January 10th and the Zoom meeting ID will be sent out in Pastor Darren's next update. Following the Q&A meeting on January 10th, there will be another online meeting on January 17th through Zoom to vote on whether our congregation approves the merger. Again, the Zoom meeting information will be sent out for that as well. The meeting is open for all to attend, but voting will be limited to church members. If you have any questions about this merger prior to these meetings, please contact Pastor Darren and he'll be happy to discuss your questions with you. We believe that reflecting God's generosity is another way to worship Him. So here are a few of the ways that you can give to Steel Heights this season. 
You can bring your offering to the church office and give it to any of the staff during office hours. Although the office will be closed from December 28th to January 1st. You can log on to our webpage at www.shbc.ca and click on the giving portion of the webpage. Or you can use your banking apps for e-transfer and use the email address giving at shbc.ca. Let's pray. God, thank you for your generosity and your riches and your blessing towards us. And thank you for your grace in giving us your son, Jesus Christ. God, I pray for the gifts that are given to Steel Heights Baptist Church, that they would be used to further your kingdom so that more people would come to know your grace and your love. Amen. Well, I'm going to enjoy this cup of coffee, but check out this next video, which I'm also in. Well, welcome, staff. It looks like we've got enough here to play Hollywood Squares. Yeah, I see some of you get to wear masks because you're all together there. And so we don't get to see your smiling faces, which is unfortunate. And it's just part of life in 2020. Um, but I just want to, on behalf of the, of the congregation, thank each and every one of you for your service to God. And, and I just want to highlight what each of you do, because I think there may be some in our congregation who, who aren't aware of the incredible work that you have all done over the past, uh, over the past year, particularly over the last nine months since COVID has changed our lives. So I'm just going to go across the screen here. So starting with Antoinette, thank you for, um, for all of your work in quarterbacking the power up uh, children's programs and as they have evolved and had to change and we had to shut things down and then bring them back up and managing all of the um, social the physical distancing for the children i know that's been difficult thank you for that lorena Lorena handles all of our books, um, and I know there have been a lot of new things thrown at you with the government grants over the last nine months and trying to figure out what we're eligible for and what we're not. And then um, with the out-of-school care staff and then them leaving and coming back, I know there's been a lot of added pressure there as well. Thank you. Amaris, thank you for joining us and, and um, all of your in front of the camera activities and writing scripts for Power Up, for Power Surge, um, Summer Sundays. I know there's been a huge crew, but uh, you've been a big part of making that all happen. Thank you. Ryan, handling all of our administration and uh, a lot of on-camera work over these last few months. That's you've, yeah, showing us a new side of you working together with, with Ben on, uh, on, on Studio Steel and being part of the Power Surge um, events as well. And for, I gotta put a plug in there for, for Studio Steel. Uh, I love your Aussie accent. And for many of you who have not seen it, you need to check it out. It's not just for youth. If you're an adult, um, you will really enjoy the, the thought-provoking discussions that these two have and some of the crazy dry humor, but you got to check out his Aussie accent. I won't even tell you which episode it is. You need to just start watching them all and uh, uh, see how God uh, um, speaks to you through those. Jessica, thank you for joining us. And I know you've been you've been in front of the camera, but you've also been doing a lot behind the camera, all the video editing. And I know how much work that is. When you put a half hour production together, it takes a lot more than a half an hour to um, actually edit that every week. And uh, they have just been so powerful. I know that a lot of the children, I know a lot of the adults are enjoying watching um, Power Up every week. So thank you for that. Kim, thank you for being the person in front of um, 
the office um, as we've still been open through the whole COVID experience. Um, and I know you've been handling the order of service and a lot of things have changed there as well to try and make things flow. So thank you for all you do. And I love your, when I call and, and get to hear your cheery voice on the other end, it always brightens my day. Thank you. Ben, you're the middle square today. Uh, thank you for your efforts with the youth and um, the online services working with Ryan early on to provide that interesting intro to our services. Um, looking to make a lot of changes to the youth program so that we can do that. I know a lot of the youth, um, it's been important for them to get together when they're in school online and they really need to make those connections so thank you for doing that and thank you for spearheading studio steel again a plug you got to check that out youtube you can also see it go to our website uh, shbc.ca and you can find the link from there carl thank you for your efforts in cleaning during covid and all of the extra requirements uh with the deep cleaning and and keeping um, everything we have in nice pristine order so that um, we don't have to worry about the COVID virus going rampant through the building. Thank you for that. And I know we we're just talking earlier about this, the snow shoveling that needs to be done. I know you're a big part of making that happen on a weekly basis. So thank you for that. Uh, going back the other direction here, Rick and Jean, thank you as well for all of your efforts in cleaning and, uh, and Rick also for Ezra. Carl, you've also helped a lot in Ezra, right? This last year, um, we've been able to do things faster by doing it with our own staff. And so I know the two of you have been very instrumental in that. Thank you for Rick for doing a lot of the quarterbacking on that. Bonnie, thank you for your service, family ministry. Family ministry, I think, is more important than ever now as families are home together more than they ever have been. Um, and I know there have been a lot of changes to try to see how that happens for our church. And then also out of school care, um, the Early Learning Center, uh, obviously a lot of changes as a result of COVID and even as we've had to deal with uh, with an outbreak and shut it down and, and bring it back up. Um, thank you for all of your efforts there. And Pastor Darren, you moved on us here, but thank you for quarterbacking everything here. Um, it's been uh, uh, tremendous just to see how we have um, been able to make the changes, how you have led the staff through being incredibly flexible and being creative um, through a year like we have never seen. Also need to point out, Darren and Bonnie, both of you are taking courses towards a seminary. Um, and I know you're adding that to your work here at the church and uh, that takes its toll as well. So thank you for that. And Darren, your, your doctorate, actually, you should unmute your mic and tell us the title of your doctorate again. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite timely, actually. Uh, it's about how we can use digital technology to enhance adult discipleship at Still Heights Baptist Church. So that's, that's my thesis. And, and especially focusing on video conferencing as a real well, probably one of the most effective tools there to help in, in discipling like we're doing right now. Yeah, so you, you, yeah, I know you didn't cause COVID, but it's sure helping you out writing your thesis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, too much, too much. Uh, too much, too much. Yeah, We've too got much enough. Data. I'm swimming enough, in data. <laughs> enough material now. Yeah. And shut it down. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, I know I know it's been a difficult year for for all of you. I know one of the probably the most difficult things is the fact that it's hard to get feedback since, um, you know, you're not ministering to people face to face 
great now for the most part. And so you can't look into their eyes and, and uh, hear comments from them about how we're doing, you know, what they would like to see changed. When you're online, you look into a camera and unfortunately you can't see through to the other side. Um, and I know it's also been a lot of work with all of the online. And I suspect that each of you have probably had days in the past nine months wondering if what you're doing is making a difference or if it's all worth it. And so I just want to encourage you with some scripture from Romans chapter eight. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Just want you all to know that God loves you more than you can ever fathom, and that He is doing His good works through each and every one of you. So be encouraged. And on behalf of the congregation of Steel Heights Baptist Church, just want to thank you so much for your selfless service to our community. Um, so at this point, if we were together on a Sunday morning, as we have traditionally done, um, we'd shake your hand, give you a hug, and give you a card and a gift, and uh, that unfortunately isn't going to happen this year. But you will be receiving a Christmas love gift in a physically distanced manner sometime over the next few days. And so we just want to wish you all a very blessed Christmas season. Um, for you, for your families, who I know have also taken a brunt of what life is like during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I uh, would hope that you all get some really good rest and relaxation and that uh, 2021 is another year like no other, but in hopefully a different way than 2020 was. So God bless you all. Merry right Christmas. Amen. Thank you, Edgar. Thanks, staff. God bless you, Still Heights. I mean, uh, went out uh, to do some shopping, and when he came back, uh, his wife uh, met him at the door, and she spot uh, a bottle of wine in his bags, and he was very excited, and she said, oh, great, uh, you, you brought some wine so that we can celebrate the year. She looked at her and, and, and he said, actually, I brought six to forget it. You know, that's uh, probably what many people are experiencing today. People are trying to forget this year. Uh, as someone said, the 2020 was a mean one. The COVID-19 have been affecting our health, our social interaction, and the economy. People uh, have been losing their jobs. Some of them closed their business, uh, uh, unable to go to church, unable to visit their relatives and friends, and others are grieving family members who die from the coronavirus disease. We knew about this uh, lady who in some ways is related with our family who lost uh, her father. And the sad thing is that she wasn't able to be with him in, his, uh, in the time that she, he was in the hospital. And for his funeral, uh, they couldn't be close to him. Uh, people from the health uh, system took the coffin and basically took it to the grave and they weren't able to be uh, with him. They were just looking at the distance. And the reality is that uh, we all face uh, challenging times in life, problems, troubles, difficulties, some of them very traumatic and others will be considered as normal. 
But uh, we also see people who will move forward. Uh, and, we will, we, and we will see people who stay stuck. And today, I want to talk about moving forward. And I would like to bring uh, three biblical uh, principles that we can follow in order to move forward in life, especially when we are going through difficult times. Because we will see that uh, in some cases, people will go through the same uh, problems, but we will, they will end with different outcomes. Uh, I know the story about these uh, four brothers who had a very traumatic childhood. They were living in uh, terrible places. Uh, they were abused. They were abandoned several times. Life was very, very hard for them. The youngest followed the steps of his father. Uh, he was an alcoholic, and sadly he ended being shot and killed by his own wife. The two oldest, they uh, became homeless, one addicted to painkillers, and the other died from cancer. But there is one who was the only one who got graduated from high school. He got married. He had kids, grandkids, stable uh, job, very su successful career. He finished college. Same problems, but different outcomes. So the question is, how are we facing uh, our problems? Are we staying stuck or are we moving forward? Because being stuck not only will be harmful to you, but to anyone around you. So it's very important that we understand what we should do based on what uh, God's word is telling us to move forward, to be a blessing for our family, our church, our community. So we will be reading in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. And we will be looking at three things that people who move forward do. And we will start reading from um, verse uh, 25. And we will talk about the, fir the first thing that they will do. And let me read first, uh, verse 25 to 26. Uh, it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. So the first thing that people who move forward do is that they don't stay with the problem. They turn away from the problem. They don't overthink about the problem. They understand that staying with the problem will make them staying stuck. Sometimes we, uh, we think that uh, speaking about our problems every day will help us to heal or to move forward, but that will do the opposite. And, and please don't take me wrong. It's not that you don't have to to you know, inform what is happening in your life. The problem is when time passes and you stay in the same place. You wake up looking for your problem. Wherever you go, you share your problems. And time passes and you're still talking about your problems, thinking about your problems, and your problems are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 
One of the things that uh, the Bible says in uh, Ecclesiastes 7.10 is, do not say why were the old days better than this, for it is not wise to ask such questions. We need to remove our focus from, from what already happened. We need to turn away from the problems. The second thing that people who move forward, uh, what they do is they seek refuge in him, in God. They understand that life uh, has different uh, difficulties and issues that are bigger than us. But they understand that our God is bigger than those problems, than those difficulties. Verse 28 sorry, says, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or, or spin. Yet I, I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do, we don't need to be anxious. We don't need to fight our problems. We need to seek refuge in him. The Bible tells us the story of this woman who was suffering from, from bleeding for 12 years. And she tried everything. She went to many doctors and she spent all she had. But when she had the opportunity to seek refuge in Christ, she did that. And she took, sorry, she touched his cloak and she was healed. So here we have someone who recognized that the world was bigger than her, that her illness was bigger than her, but she was able to recognize as well that in Jesus she can find that refuge that she was looking for. The woman who was caught in adultery, the man bring her, bring her to Jesus, expecting him to condemn her. But instead, she find in him refuge. So that's the second thing that we need to consider if we want to move forward. We need to turn away from the problem and then look refuge in him. The third thing that I um, want to share with you that I believe this uh, passage is teaching us about moving uh, forward is that we need to focus all our attention in Jesus Christ and the purpose that he has set up for us. Verse 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Our eyes need to be in Jesus. Our eyes need to be in, in the purpose that he set out for us. Sometimes uh, we found very difficult to uh, know what is our purpose in life, but it's not that difficult. If we uh, come to him, if we live with him, if we um, rest on him, because basically what he's saying is just start taking care of my people, start blessing, start putting uh, 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 your um, gift your abilities in the kingdom of, uh, to work in the kingdom of, of God. And he will take care of your needs. 
He will take care of our needs. So it is important that we uh, understand that moving forward means also that you will keep blessing others. No matter what is happening, what, is going, what are you going through, you have the option to bless other people. And the Lord will uh, give you all that you need. So people who move forward, they turn the back from their problem. They don't stay there. They don't overthink about that. They find refuge in our Lord Jesus Christ. And they focus on the purpose that God has set up for them. And they persevere on that. And I want to ask you today that uh, don't let ego, fear, pride to take this uh, lesson that we have in this passage from your heart. Ego will tell you, you know, my problems are, you know, Person, you don't understand what I'm going through. Uh, uh, the things that I do are right is what I have to do. And this is basically my life and uh, the result of my efforts. And uh, if I stuck, it's because, you know, that's what God has for me. Don't let that to get root in your heart. Put your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and he will open the doors of the heaven for you. He will bless you. He will bless your family. Uncertainty is not something that we want to live with and we don't need to live with that. COVID is just something, something else that is affecting our life, but there is many things that will remain. We are hearing that there is a vaccine that will help us to fight this virus. But even if the virus is gone, we will stay uh, still facing uh, things that are probably more dangerous than, than the virus and all the, the, these uh, consequences. Uh, selfishness, selfishness, greed, injustice, abuse, ungratefulness, hate, and forgiving hearts. So we need to uh, find refuge in our God and be thankful for all the things that he will be doing for us. I hope that uh, all of you will stay safe and our prayers are with you and we hope that we will see you soon again. That we will have the opportunity to uh, wor worship our Lord together. Uh, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and we pray that you will help us uh, through this uh, difficult time. We know that people in our congregation are going through difficult times and we pray that you will comfort them, that uh, you will provide them with all they need, uh, that they will move forward in their life and that we will be able to see each other soon. And uh, we praise your name for uh, being with us uh, during these difficult times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. song though darkness fills the night it cannot hide the light whom shall i fear you crush the enemy underneath my feet you are my sword and shield though troubles linger still 
whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me. Yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hand. You are faithful, you are faithful, and nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side i know who goes before me i know who stands behind the god of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Well, thank you, worship team, for that fitting song to end our service with. And we are going to keep moving forward as the Lord uh, is out in front and as we follow him and obey him and as we trust him going into 2021. God has brought us through some amazingly difficult times through 2020, and yet um, we are still his church here at Still Heights, we have grown, we have been strengthened, I believe, over the adversity that we've gone through in this past year, and I believe that God is going to do amazing things, greater things for his kingdom uh, in 2021 than we've possibly ever seen before here at Still Heights. And I know that the staff is excited to continue to serve you and to be shepherds and leaders uh, for you as well as God leads us. And we just want to say thank you so much for all the encouragement that we've received over this holiday season from you as a congregation. All the gifts and the cards and all the wonderful food. Now I can fill out my sweater like never before. Um, we're just so grateful to be able to serve you Still Heights. And so on behalf of the staff, I want to say thank you so much. Well, for our benediction today, 
I want to leave with you the words of the Apostle Paul from 2 Thessalonians 3, 16 and 18. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. God bless you, Still Heights. Bye for now.